Hello, this is Kimberly Fawn from Clear Center. I'm here with David Loper from Clear Center, and in today's screencast, we are going to cover the command line basics logging in, uh, browsing directories and files, and using the man command to learn more about commands. So over to David. Thank you, Kimberly. So today we're going to talk about, uh, like she said, the command line basics. And to get to the command line, there are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, one is, is that you can uh, walk up to the server, plug in a monitor and a keyboard, and using uh, Control alt f2 or Control alt f3, you can get to a login prompt, and you can log in and start using ClearOS. Um, but I'm going to quickly talk about one of the most common ways to connect, and that is remotely. So um, you can use a, a protocol called SSH to uh, connect to your ClearOS's command line. Um, this is a port that's open by default on your LAN side inter interfaces and something that you can open up to the outside world, but there are cautions that you should uh, do. You, should, you need to make sure that it is um, secure and that you've done certain things. And there's tools within ClearOS to do that we'll, that we'll talk about later when we talk about uh, the gateway and network sections. But um, within this command line interface, you can do a lot of uh, powerful things some uh, higher level things and we need to cover some of these basics so that you have at least a very familiar uh, uh, skill set with um, dealing with the command line for those people who are already um, used to the command line and know how to do ssh this is going to be uh, trivial knowledge for you you're welcome to, to stay online or uh, go ahead and skip this um, section but we're going to cover some very very basics for some new people that command line is a is kind of a brand new thing so for command line you're going to want to get a tool uh, to connect to it um, if you're using windows a very common tool is uh, putty and uh, you can just uh, download putty it's a free application there are other uh, ssh terminal programs out there but putty is a good um, starter because it's free it's open and you can go ahead and uh, grab it uh, you know very easily on the internet so uh, fire up Google and type in putty p-u-t-t-y and that should leave you, lead you to this um, URL that's uh, chiarc.greenn.org.uk so this is the this is the site where the maintainer of putty um, does that and you can look in the video um, it shows the uh, URL at the bottom um, once you get to this site um, here you'll want to click on the download it here um, in the download it here that will take you to this page where there are two main files that you want to choose from you want to either get the 32-bit if you're on a 32-bit system or the 64-bit um, if you're on a 64-bit system this is the MSI installer and what it's going to do is it's going to install the putty executable uh, you can just download the PuTTY EXE. You'll see that a little bit lower, the alternative binary files. But I do recommend that you get the full uh, PuTTY suite because there's other tools in there that you might want to use, like the PuTTY keygen and uh, other and the pageant uh, uh, agent in order to do key-based authentication, which is a little bit advanced. We're not going to cover that today, but uh, there are some very useful tools in there for doing secure access to your ClearOS server. So once the application is installed, and you're going to launch putty.exe. And putty's going to come up with a little uh, window like this. It's very simple and easy to use. You're going to put the host name or IP address of uh, the uh, ClearOS server that you want to talk to in uh, these two top fields. Now, this needs to be a server that you, uh, this needs to be a, a port that you can connect to. So again, on the LAN side, it's going to be opened up on the WAN side, it is not going to be opened up. If your password is not secure, or if you haven't changed it from the default, if it came pre-installed with ClearOS, you should not open up this port to the outside world. You will get owned in just a few seconds. I've seen it happen before. Um, you want to make sure that your uh, password is secure before opening up that port. Um, but if you're on the, the LAN and say, for instance, you just plug this in, you're connected directly to ClearOS, it's not even connected to the internet, 
you can uh, connect up with uh, this PuTTY program to SSH on the LAN side. So again, note that, that this uh, port 22 may not be 22. Um, by default, it's 22, but later within ClearOS, you can change it. In fact, we recommend that that's something that you do, that you change it to a different port. Um, 22 is very commonly known as a management port for um, SSH, and having it on a default port helps to obscure that. The other thing you can do is you can uh, make it so that it's only open to certain addresses, you can also use key-based authentication so that passwords don't work for people who are trying to log in through that port. There's a number of different things you can do, and we, we recommend that you do a uh, plurality of them to secure your box. So here uh, within PuTTY, again, you can save this profile that you're uh, connecting to. Um, you can Here we're doing uh, a connection today to a microserver Gen 10, and uh, so I'm going to list here that uh, I'm gonna connect to my microserver Gen 10. By the way, this port 172.22.22.1 uh, is the default port of the LAN address of the microserver Gen 10 that comes shipped with ClearOS. So if ClearOS came on your system, you can actually take your laptop and connect directly into the second port and you should be able to SSH uh, to this port to do management right from the very first boot. Um, after this, uh, there are more features within uh, PuTTY. We recommend that you find more uh, about them, especially like key-based authentication, some logging options, and some scroll back that you can do. Now, you're going to hit connect, or open, sorry, to uh, connect to your server. And the first time you do, you're going to get um, this little alert saying that it's not cached in the registry. Um, this number here, on secure, uh, very secure environments, you'll want to have looked up this number um, at the walk-up console with the monitoring keyboard attached before you um, even uh, connect with PuTTY or you, know, you start using um, the SSH. You can find out what this is with the command that I've listed on this slide. Um, but this fingerprint is unique to your server. Mathematically, it's unique and um, you should be able to um, have a record of it. Incidentally, there are other ways that you can secure this, including um, using DNS to provide security for your SSH. All right, so after you hit uh, yes to the, uh, to the security alert, or if this is the second time that you've connected to uh, your server, you're going to be prompted with a username. Uh, the default username is root. You're going to supply that there. And then there's going to be, you're going to hit enter, and there's going to be the ability to enter in your password. It will not echo any characters as you're typing. So there's not going to be any stars or dots as you're typing the password. It will just be blank, but it is typing your password. Once you've uh, entered in the password, you're going to hit enter, and it's going to give you a command prompt that ends in this um, uh, hash sign. So uh, again, the default uh, password is root. Uh, sorry, the default username is root, and the password is whatever uh, it was you defined while you do, did the install for ClearOS. Now, if ClearOS came pre-installed, it's going to be password, and you should take this opportunity to change it immediately if it is password. If you logged in as password here, you need to change it right away. Um, you can use the passwd command. Um, which is like password, but it's missing an OR, P-A-S-S-W-D, and it will ask you to type your password twice. Okay, so there are other things that we recommend. Again, key-based function, if uh, authentication and functionality. If you have set that up, it's not gonna ask you for a password for the root. It's going to ask you for the password for your key. Um, if you um, are using an agent and you've already authenticated against your key, then it will dump you right at a um, command prompt for root. Now in Mac, um, it gets a little bit easier because there's nothing to download. You can start using SSH right away. It, there's already a terminal application on your Mac that will allow you to do this. So open up your applications window. You're gonna then go under the utilities menu and then you're going to find a, a program called Terminal and you're going to launch that. And that's going to give you this little uh, white window. You can change the colors if you like. I, I do. 
Um, and then here you're going to uh, SSH to the server with the command SSH space root at and then the IP address or the host name of your server. So here I've uh, put in the IP address of my microserver Gen 10 um, and uh, I am going to authenticate and establish a connection to it. Now, on the first time that you connect, again, uh, it's going to give you uh, a fingerprint for this particular server. And you're going to have to say uh, yes to confirm connecting to um, that, this server. Uh, it will prompt you for the password. Again, it's not going to echo what you're typing for security reasons. Somebody's looking over your shoulder or somebody has a camera on you then they're going to have to pick up uh, your fingers on the keyboard in order to see that. The actual window will not show anything while you're typing. Um, and then finally, if you authenticate, you are going to get uh, your command prompt. So this is, uh, again, the key-based authentication. You're going to have a similar thing. You're going to be prompted for the password of your key, or you're just going to be um, logged in. So that takes care of it for... Um, getting access to the terminal. So at this point, you should be uh, logged into the terminal. You're either at the console, and thank you for uh, hanging with us while uh, we've, we've done this, if that's the way you're choosing to connect, or you are um, connected via SSH through uh, like PuTTY or uh, one of your own applications. Okay, so here we are on our shell. Um, now, there's some significance to what we see here when we're logged in. Um, we can see that we're logged in as root at Gateway. And Gateway is the name of the machine that I have. It's a microserver Gen 10. And after that, you can see this little tilde character. And what that means is that we're currently in the directory of the user that is uh, logged in. So we're in root's home directory right now. And after that, we have the hash prompt and that means that we are have escalated privileges that we are not a uh, just a named user we are the root of the system so be very careful when you're manipulating things here so uh, a couple of basic commands um, ls is a very basic command and what it does is it lists the um, contents of the directory you're in so here we're in roots directory we can see that there is this anaconda-ks.cfg. That's a default file that exists from the install of ClearOS. Um, I can also type pwd here and it will confirm what um, we said before, which is that we are in roots directory. And you can always use that pwd. It's, it, it, uh, it stands for present working directory. And ls is short for list. So here we can kind of see the basis of the structure of the, the Linux file system here. So Linux um, and POSIX in general is based off of a tree-based architecture. So if you're familiar with the Windows uh, world, you'll have different drive letters like C and D and other drive letters. But in, in Linux and POSIX and Unix, uh, we have a tree structure. So everything is based off of this forward slash directory. I'm going to go there to cd forward slash, that's change directory, it's the same in DOS, change directory space forward slash. And now you can see the directory has changed in my prompt. Um, this is the very root of the not only the file system, but the system in general. And Linux doesn't just store files here, so don't think of it like a C drive, but think of it as kind of a... Uh, a big tree that you're going to snap things on. One of the things that you can snap on, for example, is a file system. Um, but you can also snap in other things inside of that file system. And we can take a look around here at some of the default directories and structures that exist in ClearOS. So some of these directories, most of them, are actual uh, subdirectories of the file system that we're on. But some of these um, directories are not really um, file systems. They are synthetic um, directories. And one of those is PROC, for example. So um, the, everything that's in PROC is, this is dynamically created. There's not a file system. These, these files and directories don't exist as files somewhere. Um, 
other things that uh, you can snap things into like sysbus or device, uh, the dev directory. Um, here in the dev directory, we have actual things like TTY terminals and we have hard disks and we have um, uh, virtual uh, devices like PPP, network devices, MEM, fuse drivers, things like that. They're just, they're not your traditional file system stuff. So um, those are things that are snapped into this um, directory structure. Um, for the most part, as you're working with ClearOS, you're going to primarily work in a directory or uh, user directories, uh, the etc directory. Um, in this directory, we have configuration files. Um, you're going to use um, the var directory, for example. This is where you're going to store stuff that is going to change um, var for variable, varying in size. So here we have things that are going to grow and expand, like your file system that you're going to put down for like uh, your flex shares and other things like that. That's what that's what var is. Your log files are here. They grow in size. Um, the user directory is where you would find um, things that uh, get installed, like applications, um, DLL type equivalents. We in in, in uh, Linux they're called libraries. Um, things like this are going to show up in in the user directory as well as in the um, uh, in the op directory. Sometimes you'll get uh, programs and things like that. Uh, our op directory doesn't have anything in it right now. Um, let me go back to the root of the file system. So you can see CD gets you different places. Now there's this concept of relative directories and absolute directories. So if I type uh, ls forward slash um, etc clear OS, for example, I'm going to see folders that are in clear OS. Now that's also, I can also type ls etc clear OS and that will work. But if I'm in a different directory like um, uh, roots home directory, right? And I do those commands again, uh, like ls etc clear OS, um, it's going to work. But if I do that other command, ls etc clear OS, it's not going to work because that's the difference between a relative directory and an absolute directory. If I start with a forward slash, then that's an absolute directory. And then I have to specify down and down and down into directories until I get to the thing that I want. But if I do it without a forward slash, then it's going to go from the point that I'm at right now. And there's no directory here called etc. But if I made one called etc and I made one called etc clear OS, then if I did that command, it would give me blank, right? There's nothing there. So this is this is some of the basic structure for the Linux command system. And I apologize if this is um, mundane or, or uh, redundant for people that know some of this stuff, for, but for new, new users of, of Linux and ClearOS, this is, you know, kind of a new territory. So we're, we're going to cover it here. Um, a couple of neat tools that you have within, uh, within ClearOS is you have this concept of command line history. So if I run the history command, for example, I can see different commands that I've been executing on the system. And if I um, use the up arrow key, I can go through those commands that I've typed and it will remember them. So I'm going to clear the screen here. So the, uh, the up arrow to be able to, com you know, to type in a command that you've previously typed is hugely useful. And they've added that into Windows. So um, that's uh, something that you can do in, in, in Linux and in Windows. The other um, neat thing that uh, ClearOS has is uh, command line completion. So I can type just part of a command and it will finish it. So here I'm going to type ls space forward slash etc and I'm going to hit the tab command. And it's going to complete it because there is a directory that starts out that way and there's only one. Now if I type um, S, for example, here, and I hit tab, it's not going to do anything. It's going to complain. 
but if I hit tab twice it will actually show me my options so this is really useful for browsing into um, directories maybe you kinda know what it's called but you're not absolutely sure and you can t start typing something and if there's only one of them then it will complete it if there's multiples it's going to complain and then you hit the tab a second time and it will show you the choices that you have so that's a that's a couple of basics for how to navigate around the file system structure now lastly there's a very important command um, that uh, exists there for uh, POSIX in general Unix Linux um, clear OS and that is the man command I was told that this is the most important command in uh, Linux because this is the one that tells you how to do everything else. So if I want to find out more about the ls command that we've been using, I can type man space ls. And this will give me a list of all of the different options that I have with this command. And sometimes if you scroll down, I'm using the arrow keys to scroll down, sometimes it will even give you examples. Um, but it will uh, it will always kind of follow this format of showing you what the different switches are and things like that. Um, if you want to get out of this manual uh, program that's showing you how to use this command, you just hit the Q key, and that will that will exit you out. Um, so there, what we've covered we've covered a little bit of you know navigating around uh, Linux. Uh, we've covered getting SSH access to it. Um, we've also covered uh, being able to see what's in directories and, and looking at those things. These are very important tools for a, a, a new user. We're going to, in some of the more, um, uh, more robust how-tos, we're going to cover some of these things. Um, so this is important that you know how to, to do some of these things, because in those other videos, we may go a little bit fast through some of these uh, basic commands. And again, if you see something in a video um, that you don't quite understand or you want to learn more about that command that you know we're using some command line text in ClearOS, just use that man command space and then the name of that command and it will show you some more options that you have about that. And as always, you can uh, look on the ClearOS forums or you can even ask questions on the ClearOS forums if you're not sure how to do something. Thank you, David. That was really great. Um, I appreciate you talking to us today about the command line basics. And everyone, check back later for more content from Clear Center and Hewlett Packard Enterprise.